so in this video we will study about the double fertilization and triple fusion in angiosperms so most of the student they feel difficulty in visualizing the topic so how the double fertilization and triple fusion takes place so for them i have made this three dimensional animation video so that it will help them to understand the concept of double fertilization and triple fusion because this is a very important topic of class 11 biology so now with the help of animation video we will try to understand the double fertilization and triple fusion Flowering plants undergo a unique reproductive process where there are two fertilization events. This double fertilization event occurs between the male reproductive organ, the male gametophyte, and the female reproductive organ, the female gametophyte. Before the fertilization event can occur, the ovule has to undergo some changes. At present, the ovule contains one reproductive cell known as the megaspore or mother cell. This cell is diploid and undergoes meiosis, producing four haploid megaspores. In the majority of species, three of these megaspores degenerate, leaving only one surviving megaspore. This surviving megaspore expands and undergoes three rounds of mitosis to produce eight haploid nuclei. As the nuclei have not developed any individual division, they initially share the same cytoplasm. This complete structure is known as the embryo sac. Within the established embryo sac, cell walls begin to form between most of the nuclei. Three cells named antipodal cells form opposite the opening of the ovule, known as the micropyle. Another three cells form above the micropyle. Two of these are synergids, and the other is the egg cell. This leaves two nuclei in the center of the ovule. These central nuclei remain together in one large cell. It is the egg cell and this central nucleate cell which will eventually become part of the double fertilization event. In order for the double fertilization event to occur, the male gametes, the sperm, must travel from the anther to the embryo sac within the female reproductive organ. The pollen grain contains two main cells. A cell named the tube cell makes up the bulk of the pollen grain and the sperm cell, which at this stage is known as the generative cell. To reach the embryo sac, a pollen grain must land on the stigma. Once landed, it begins to germinate. The tube cell forms a long structure down the style and into the ovary. The generative cell travels behind the tube cell nucleus. Once near the ovary, it divides by mitosis to produce two haploid sperm cells. The pollen tube reaches the micropyle and releases the sperm cells into the embryo sac. One of the two sperm cells fertilizes the egg cell. This produces a diploid zygote, which will become the embryo. The other sperm cell moves up and fuses with both of the central nuclei, forming a triploid cell. This unusual triploid cell develops into an endosperm and serves as the embryo's food supply during early development. It is only angiosperms, flowering plants, which have this double fertilization characteristic, where a diploid zygote and a triploid endosperm form. Gymnosperms, pines, tracheophytes, ferns, and non-tracheophytes, mosses, lack this double fertilization feature.
Flowering plants or angiosperms are one of the most diverse groups of plants found on our planet. Although there are variations in their external structure or morphology, all of them are characterized by the presence of roots, stems, leaves, flowers and fruits. The portion of a flowering plant above the ground is termed as the shoot system, while the portion below the ground is termed as the root system. The root system provides proper anchorage to the plant. It helps in the synthesis of plant growth regulators and is responsible for the absorption of water and minerals from the soil to different parts of the plant. From the tip upwards, a root has a root cap, a region of meristematic activity, a region of elongation and a region of maturation along with root hairs. The root cap is a sheath of cells present at the tip of the root that protects the root while entering the soil. The region of meristematic activity is just above the root cap where the cells are very tiny and rapidly divide to produce new cells for growth. The region of elongation has cells that undergo rapid enlargement and elongation that causes the root to grow in length. The region of maturation has elongated cells that differentiate and mature. The primary tissues and root hairs develop here. The root hairs are fine delicate structures that emerge from the region of maturation and assist in the absorption of water and minerals for the plant from the soil. There are various kinds of roots in flowering plants. In dicotyledonous plants like mustard, radish and carrot, the embryonic root or radical grows into the soil to form the primary root. Multiple lateral roots called secondary roots emerge from the primary root. These secondary roots further branch into tertiary roots. The primary root along with its branches forms the taproot system. In monocotyledonous plants like wheat and coconut, the primary root is short-lived and is replaced by a network of many large and small roots originating from the base of the stem. This network of roots forms the fibrous root system. These fibrous roots spread laterally and do not penetrate deep into the soil unlike tap roots. There are some plants like monstera and grass which have roots that do not arise from the radical. The roots emerge from various other parts of the plant like the stem or the leaf. These roots are known as adventitious roots. Some roots also modify themselves to perform specific functions for the plant. For example, the adventitious root in a sweet potato swells up and stores food for the plant. Similarly, in banyan trees, the modified adventitious roots, also known as prop roots, help support the tree. In plants like sugarcane and maize, the roots emerge from the lower node of the stem to support the plant. These roots are called stilt roots. Roots also modify themselves to help get oxygen for respiration. Such roots are called pneumatophores and are seen in plants like rhizophora that grow in swampy areas. Therefore, the root system forms an important part of a flowering plant.